Next clip um, is a, a piece of news which absolutely blew my mind when I when I saw this. Um, this is um, researchers have used AI to generate images based on people's brain activity. So we're getting one step closer to the neural link. So researchers found that they can reconstruct highly accurate images from brain activity just by using popular uh, the stable diffusion uh, image generation model so the top shows what the individuals were looking at and then they were thinking about what they were seeing and then the ai was reading those brain waves and then recreating the image on the screen those are just two examples but uh, i mean they're not perfect but they are pretty um close there are other examples as well if you want to google and see the research paper um but those are just a couple of um examples that that, that we had um available um insane what what, what are your thoughts on, on on this um lorenzo we'll start with you again this is incredible i read the paper and i'm purely amazed imagine i'm so excited about this actually i really want yeah. to try it out just for fun no, here, here, uh, no. Uh, good morning. Here are your dreams of last night. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or no, I always wanted to have. I, I did a lot of coding, of course, yeah. and uh, I just want to think about the code and see the text appear, or yeah. just things to be done automatically. I love to be to imagine things and make it happen on yes. a screen, like in digital format. That interface is so powerful if you think about it. I, I really want to see oh, what are they thinking, and you can just extrapolate, or you go to a customer. They want a website, right? you hook it up and yes. you get a better idea. This uh, is a whole new interface. It would speed up things so much. I'm super, super excited about this. I didn't think about the dreams. That's a really good point. You'll be able to see your dreams in, in the morning. And, and, and if you have enough machine learning, you can probably create uh, you know, trends, see if what people are dreaming of and why they're dreaming of that. There might be some science to... Can you tell psychologists, all? maybe? Can you see... Maybe. That no, that area no soft skills. That, sure. No, the theory of uh, of art, etc. No, it will be a great uh, improvement in many things. I love this. Well, when you see this, Nick, what's what's your take on on that story? I'm going to say it blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, Literally, and read it. Yeah, it's really really interesting. I mean, uh, funny enough, you talking about coding. I was funny enough. I was thinking about music, and I was just thinking about how e you know how that can transpose into the way that you you. You, you think of a tune in your head and it just all of a sudden we all become composers yeah. overnight. Yeah. Um, the, the, the possibilities are endless with it. I, 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 I think probably, obviously, it's at a very early stage at the moment and we all know that um, we're not able to plan for a year in advance, but we we also we, we don't have a vision for 10 years' time. Mm. If you think about how, how quickly something like chat GPT is developed in the very short time, Something like this is going to just develop. What, what's yes. it going to look like in ten years' time? Yeah, it's just going to be so refined and so clever. Yeah, um, I was actually trying to think of a downside of it, and at the moment, I can't. Is there one? I mean, the, well, the government reading your mind? Well, and that was the I, advertisers I, selling I, that stuff to you. You know, I did sort of get an Orwellian thought in my head about Maybe. 1984, and that was a bit of a worry where the um, yeah the dream police take over. Yeah, I, I don't want Mark Zuckerberg in, in control of this. I mean, he's uh, he's got enough of my data, but um, well, there's a few others as well, isn't there? No, he's not just the only one, but I do know yeah. exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah. No, it's interesting. Um, you don't want the government in charge of it, though, do you? Really? Absolutely not. No, no, no. I mean, any government which gets too much power doesn't want to give that power away after they've after they've been given it. We saw that with lockdown, and they just kept extending, extending, yeah. and obviously for, for for legitimate reasons to begin with. But then, in certain areas of the world, it just became a power play, you know, yeah. and them just wanting to hold on to that. Um, what what's your take, Giuseppe, when you see this this story? That's very interesting. I would really be interested to see how they trained yeah. this AI. No? Yeah, yeah. Especially for the dreams. But as Nick was saying, I was thinking about two movies, Minority Report and uh, Wim Wenders uh, and, uh, Up to the End of the World or something like that. Okay. Where people, they become obsessed watching their dreams. Okay. And, you know, the overreach of the governments and, you know, if they know what you're thinking, it's, it can be really scary mm. on that side. Absolutely. You know? So we... We need to act also on, the, on that side because, of course, we still need to have our freedom of thoughts, at least. <laughs> I'm just thinking from a commercial perspective. If you link this to, like, Elon Musk's neural link, you could 
think of, you could see something and then post that onto your Instagram just by seeing it and thinking post. Um, you could send a picture to somebody else's mind just by, you know, if I if I have a, an image of a website I want to be built, rather than me thinking of it and showing you on a screen, Lorenzo, I could just send you that in your mind and send, send ideas to, to, to each other. Um, would you guys want to try that? Do you think that would be a, a good use case? Would that be, I mean, you're, you're, you're nodding and smiling yeah. like a, a five-year-old on Christmas. So I, I think you've just come up with a 10-year vision. Maybe. I, I mean, think, yeah, I mean, where, where emissions, it isn't, they don't mean anything, though, because in, in six months it'll be something different, right? Yeah, but if you think about where's it, where's this going to be in 10 years' time, yeah. that's a, the sort of thing you've just said there is exactly where it will be. Yeah, yeah, probably. If not, if not quicker. The exponential growth. I mean, ChatGPT yeah. was the, the fastest-growing um, service product in history. It's gone from, like, zero to 100 million in, in, in days. Mm. It took, um, you know, Netflix years to get there. It took Facebook months. It took Instagram weeks. It took, you know, TikTok, you know, longer than that. But we've never seen anything grow that quickly. Just wait until we have tech that's growing in a couple of minutes or hours and get hit, re- reaching millions and millions of people. Um, what, what, what do you think, um, Lorenzo, on the... Um, Neuralink site, would you want to give that a go? I'm, I'm very open to things to try. So definitely technology is a yes. I'd yeah. like to see, to explore which type of interfaces can we create now. Yeah. Um, I see something similar like artificial limbs uh, or moving your artificial fingers with I your foot, these yes. type of things. Yes. And I'd like to explore that more. How can we augment human or or have an aid during work? Yeah. What's your take, Gi- Giuseppe? My, my idea for real on there, combine this with uh, Neuralink, do you think that could, that's got legs? That is very interesting. Uh, if it's not mandatory and you can try it on your, like, it's your decision, it's good, of course. Uh, on the other side, I would be scared because of possible hackings of the system. Yes. And it's connecting to your brain. So I... I, I'm not sure if I would like to try it. <laughs> that's that's the question, right? Because this has groundbreaking positive impacts, but also could be the the worst thing ever if if everyone's got this and then suddenly some you know 14 year old kid in in Iowa hacks everything and then boom mm-hmm. he's he's now master of the universe, right? So does AI excite you? Does it scare you? Is it both? Which way do you lean, um, Nick? W- w- what what would be your answer to that kind of paradigm? When I first thought about AI. It blew my. I, I kind of had a ground zero moment, and it bothered me quite a bit. And mm. I thought, what are we? Goes back to our sort of earlier conversation with the car. And I thought, what are we all going to do? Mm. But then I thought. Then I became the optimist after about five days, and I went, mm, you know, let's let's think about this seriously, and you know, we'll do other things. There'll be other things that will come about because we'll reinvent jobs. We'll be able to do things better. We'll be able to improve the quality. We'll be able to do jobs that we no longer want to. You know, the, anything which is dangerous or mundane will no longer be a, required to do them. People can go and do bigger and better things. Mm. Obviously, I've said about my concerns there. I thought what's really interesting is that Steve Wozniak and Musk have come out saying, well, hold on. A six-month pause. Yeah. yeah. Let's, and it's it's interesting because I'm not Italian, but I suppose I'm, I'm a son of Italy. Sure. Well, I haven't worked there. But Italy's banned. Yeah, they have. They've made it illegal. They've made it illegal. Yeah. And it's really interesting. And I know there's schools and colleges in the States as well where they're banning yeah. AI. Yeah. Um, and I think Wozniak, didn't Wozniak go to the governments and say, look, I've got this. Well, don't you want to don't you want to look at this and try and control or manage it in some way? So many of them have tried. Elon yeah. went to Obama and, and said he was terrified about the implications. Apparently he, he didn't care. He just brushed him off and said, No, AI is not gonna be a thing, Elon, you know, go back to the rockets. Yeah. And I think I think the same happened with Steve Wozniak as mm. well. And I think that's the worry. And he said, Okay, fine, we'll make it open. Mm. And I think that's the worry. Yeah. And I I suppose with me, what I think about with AI is there's all the positive things you can do about it. But it's like anything, it's like the dark web. Yeah. What are the negative things? And, you know, you can type into, you know, how do I make a dirty bomb? How do I make a biological bomb? And I can pretty much guess I've not tried yeah. that one, I hasten to I add. GPT probably would be able to give you some kind of recipe. I think it could, and yeah. that's a worry, isn't it? Yeah. Because you could get some someone, you know, with the whole terrorism and the extremists. So, sure. oh, goodness, what is the balance? I don't know. There's so many good things it can do, but, of course, there are always bad people. Uh, Giuseppe, does AI excite you? Does it scare you? Which direction do you lead in? I'm I'm very excited. Uh, you know, I was developing my own uh, using neural networks, my own system, three years ago. Okay. To recognize that writing, it was very interesting, 
And at that time, I remember um, famous pioneer in the area, uh, Kurzweil, wrote two books. Yes, One Singularity. Is, yeah, The Age of Intelligent yeah. Machines and The Age of Spiritual Machines. I've read them and both. Great books. Yeah, great yeah, books. Yeah, yeah. And it's very interesting because he, and he's also a visionary, he can predict things as well. You, know, you can look on Wikipedia. No? Yeah. But anyway, it's very interesting to see when he wrote that the problem is that when this AGI, mm. that is, we didn't, don't know when it's coming, but I think it will come soon, yeah. will be smarter than us and we didn't, know, didn't notice. Mm. We will not notice that it's going to be smarter than us. And that will be, I think, a little bit problematic. Yes. Because we don't know what will be the ethics of this AGI and how it will treat us. Yeah. On the other side, it, they did some tests, I think, a few days ago with ChatGPT4 to do a task. Okay. And by its own, the AI hired someone on TaskRabbit to beat the chapter, you know, recognizing uh, the password on the screen and, you know. And it did on its own, so it's already a little bit scary. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. I mean, Kurzweil says 2045 is the year that, um, you know, uh, the singularity happens. I think AGI may be in <laughs> GPT-5 or 6. Uh, it's probably going to come sooner than, than yeah. that. I think he, even he underestimated the exponential growth, most likely. But I don't think human brains can, can, um, can grasp it because it works faster than our monkey brains think about stuff. We, we, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... AI goes one, two, four, eight, sixteen, and then by the yeah. time you're at thirty, you're at billions and billions, right? Yeah. What? What do you, um, Lorenzo? Are, are you excited? Are you? Are you terrified by, by AI? Which direction do you swing in? It's definitely both, right? There's yeah. there's excitement and there's scare of it, but at a macro level, I'm thinking that people over the ages have always been scared of new technology. Most technology have been called Orwell, Orwellian, yeah. and that's at some point, or you think of the good and the bad. So. I don't think we, uh, as this generation, we have the right to be more scared than our predecessor even hundreds years ago. Every every time in history we saw this is the fastest uh, decade of uh, technological, technological accelerations ever. Yeah. Is it true? Probably it is uh, going faster and faster. But uh, uh, human, human people are the same, right? Human capacity has not grown that much over centuries. So I think... Um, the peak of innovation, the peak of speed is still limited by the human factor. Mm -hmm. That's why I think we, we cannot really, we shouldn't be more scared than our predecessors. And then I see if they were scared and then I'm scared, but nothing too bad happened. Yeah, of course, we had the world war, etc. I think yes. we recently learned some big lessons from that. But I refuse to be scared because of this uh, historical reason. I mean, we have Russia, Ukraine. I mean, what war? We haven't learned those lessons in the in the grand scheme of things, have we? Or some people haven't. Or maybe m maybe human have not evolved as technology, right? No. We didn't make my, our thinking much better. We're, 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 we're monkeys with nuclear bombs and and technology, which is going to replace all of our jobs in 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 a couple of decades. It's uh, it's it, it's crazy, right? Um, what 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 your kind of Final thoughts on AI, Nick. Do, do you? Um, I mean, you, you kind of gave both answers there. You said you were excited and scared. But if you had to lean in one direction, because Gi Giuseppe was more excited, you seemed more excited. I'm probably more scared, um, and, and of this, to be honest. But if you had to pick a side, what what, what side would you go with? I think, as I said earlier, I'm an optimist, technical yeah. optimist. So okay. I like to see the good in everything. Okay. But I think you know you, you've made some really really valid points. I mean, version five of Chat. GPT comes out, as you say, with AGI. Yeah, by the end of the year, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and it just, just gives you, you know, um, you know, that's got a hundred more yeah, yeah. factoring points. That, so we're talking about billions of endpoints now. Yeah, and I think that's quite, that, you know, that's quite frightening when it starts to think for itself. Where does that take you? So I think there's that, but at the same time, it's the possibility of what it can do. So if you look at things and it can get all the information that it can get. You know, I don't know. Say curing cancer, for example, could sure. be one, and he sure. gets all that information, and he can, he's going to get a, he's going to get an answer a lot quicker. Of course, yeah. And I think that's the that's the plus side of it. It's the nefarious activities that of course, obviously that we worry about. So yeah. I'm going to say that I'm an optimist, and I think if it, in the right hands, it's the right tool. I I wouldn't be surprised if at some point there is some more control over this, yeah. and it's not an open 
platform that is believed that it is, is at the moment. Yeah. I mean, the, the question of, you, you raised the, the idea of sentience uh, and the, um, I think you, you actually echoed what I'm about to say, Giuseppe, a second ago, is that we won't know if it can think for itself because there'll be no real way of, I mean, the Turing test is kind of, it doesn't matter anymore because you can, it, it will be so advanced that it, it will tell you it's alive, but you won't, how can you test that? You know, that there won't be any way of really doing it. I mean, I know there are tests that we have, but I think it doesn't really matter. And even if it is alive, what what does that mean? Like, are you going to wake up tomorrow and then do things differently? Uh, probably not. I mean, you're just going to go about your day as, as if you were going about every other day. W- would there be mass panic on on the streets and, and rioting just because GPT-7 can, um, you know, knows how to think? Um, I mean, what what is intelligence? Did, you know, is it uniquely biological, or, or can we recreate it in, in the same way that, that we have it? Um, and then, if if we can recreate it, and it has got a mind for its own, you got to think of the implications. Because with the Internet of Things, it will be it will be more powerful than, than all of us. It will it will be in control of every you know every computer, every lamp post, every every self driving car, every. Uh, VR headset, every microphone, everything, you know, it's, uh, we'll, we'll be, we're creating our, the evolutionary next step, the, the replacement potentially. Do, do you, um, if we had to guess on sentience, um, that's a weird sentence, isn't it? But uh, what do you think, Giuseppe? Do you think AI could ever become sentient or do you think it will always remain um, remain a, uh, a calculator? I honestly don't think we have a definition for sentience. Okay. How can Bi- we biological say? awareness and consciousness yeah. do, do you think it will ever become conscious in the same way that we are i think it will be a different type of consciousness okay so it's we call it artificial i see it honestly as a natural natural artificial evolution of, of our beings mm. they will be much more powerful than us and uh, like in the, the case of task rabbit uh, the looks like that the machine uh, lied saying it was blind Mm. Per, a blind person, not it was just chat GPT. Sure. So it will be very interesting. I think it will be a different type of consciousness. Yeah. Also, if we, I, I, I don't know if we have the definition for our biological human consciousness. We don't have it. We don't know what is intelligence really. Mm. And uh, but that for sure will be different. And in my opinion, will be the next stage of evolution of human and artificial. Lorenzo, will AI? Re- recreate biological consciousness sentience what do you think i think it's mostly a matter of definitions i remember dealing with this problem many years ago even before ai was mm. uh, was very popular no you can read about the chinese room or the experiment of swapping brains between two people to yeah. see what does define consciousness and I like that textbook definition which is you know, separating uh, intelligent uh, behavior from intelligent uh, essence from an, the in, an intelligent sentient uh, something entity so what you expose like what you do your action define what you are by that definition doesn't really matter if you can think uh, or someone else is thinking for you it just matter what you can actually do mm. and uh, i prefer to define it in this way right you are an ai but you can only output text uh, sure so it can be any text you want based on input but that's the actual definition so more of a pragmatic one uh, but at least gives away from uh, thinking in terms of are you really capable of thinking or generating new thoughts yeah. so a more pragmatic approach okay nick yes or no on recreating sentience do, do you do you see it happening i do but probably not in my lifetime okay so you think it's more long term i think it's a long term thing mm. i been you know, while you were asking the other guys i was i was racking my brains thinking about this how where do where do i sit where do i stand with it and i think it's also about personality and individuality and I think once you can create that, then I think you have something. Now, I'm not saying I think that's particular to people and particular to people's life experiences. But then again, with machine learning, you're learning new experiences all the time. So it's a yeah. I I think it's a way off. Would be my view. Okay. I think it's something. But I definitely think in fifty years time. Sure. Thirty years time, definitely. Okay. Okay. I mean, we um, often underestimate what we can do in a week, but we overestimate what we can do in 10 years. So um, we'll have to see.
Hey, thanks for watching this YouTube video. If you want to see more like this, please remember to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.